Good morning adventurers, this is Cal Barry. Stayed here last night and we're just taking off in the morning. Um, straight through there is where we're going to be. That's uh, the Shark Bay region up there. So we're going to go inland and all the way around and up the peninsula to the uh, Point Peron. So that's uh, the plan for today. I don't know where we're going to end up or where we're going to camp. We're looking for a place where you can have a fire because on some of that, Fires are controlled, so we're, we'll see how we go. But this trip uh, is another easy four-wheel drive trip, or relatively easy. You can do it in most four-wheel drives, uh, unmodified or modified. So I'll show you the track and the terrain and things as we go around. So that's where we're heading. Basically straight across there to the horizon is uh, Shark Bay, can't quite see it. And this is the town of Calbarry. So let's get on the road and uh, get out there. So we just turned off the Calbarry uh, Agena Road and down here is a old, two things, an a old lead smelter built into a hill and a lead mine right on the edge of the Murchison River. So we'll go and take a look at the smelter and then we'll go and try and find the mine. The mine's down some tracks. I went there a few years ago. I haven't been there for a while. I'll have to find the tracks. But uh, there's bits and pieces of the old mine. I think it was around the turn of the century that this was running. And I presume that uh, the old railway track to Agena would have been uh, the transport for the lead ore or the lead ingots or whatever they made it into uh, to get to back to civilization. So pretty interesting. So let's, uh, road's a bit potholed. Let's uh, go and take a look at the lead smelter first. So this is a turn off to the lead smelter and I don't know if you can see it up the top of the hill there. It's the one one Bano lead smelter. There's a stack and they sort of built it into the hill. Um, it goes down like a, into the hill. So I don't exactly know how a lead smelter works, but that's how it was built. So there it is up there. There's a sign here that explains it. You can uh, pause it on there. There's a path that goes up the hill over there, but I'm going to go take a quick look over here. Oh yeah, maybe there's some tunnels and things. Oh, there's a brick wall up in here. Oh yeah, you can sort of see this here. It might be a tunnel or something. Part of the infrastructure. It's a pole there. There's a uh, stone structure there. Oh, let's keep walking up here. Yeah, so that chimney is burrowed down into the hill and here's a tunnel of some sort. Tunnel must go into that hill. That must go right the way under that chimney. Barry's now that way. There's a big tunnel that goes all the way down. And that other tunnel on the side must meet up with it. So Kalbarri's through there, that's to the slightly southwest. This is the smelter, as I said before, and the mine is over 
uh, that way, somewhere in the bush. Make our way down this path, and I think there's some other ruins and living quarters and things on the way down. What's in here? Deer? Oh, book to sign. Stone with sort of render on the inside. Looks like there was a couple of rooms in this one. These are. Oh, that looks like the chassis of some sort of vehicle. That's what that is. I bet that's a chassis of some sort of steam powered vehicle. Oh, maybe. Looks like a little bit of a leaf spring set up there, so maybe, the, maybe that's what it is. So that's the smelter, so now let's go and find the mine that fed the lead ore to the smelter, which is just down here in the bush. Might take us a couple of goes to find that. Um, I haven't been there for a while, and it's just on some tracks, so let's uh, see what we can find. Oh, there's a track that goes off to the left here. This is a good track, so maybe this is it. I'll try this one. part of a mine here. Let's take a look at this part. So this must be part of the mine, but it's not the actual one that I was thinking of. I haven't been to this one before. This is a different track. There's some old cars in here. An old ute. And it looks like the mine is over here. Some old timbers. It's a long way down. Let's throw a rock down there. See how long far it is. That's a long way. It's another hole over the here. Yeah, it's all green here. Usually, when I'm out here. This part of the world is as dry as a chip, but it's been rain come through and it's surprising what life there is. I don't know if you can see that, but under there, there is a whole bunch of timber and they've dug all that out heading that way. There was some mines that I haven't seen before, some pretty deep shafts there. So we'll continue down the, we'll continue down the, uh, this track until we find the other mine. Whoa, a bit rough. Let's uh, head off. Thank you. 
So this is the site of the mines, and this is all ruins here, ruins there, ruins there, ruins everywhere. And there's a little hut here somewhere, I haven't seen it yet, but one interesting thing, this Murchison River is flowing quite quickly. So we'll go and take a look at that. Every time I come here, it's in the summer and it's always dry up here. These buildings with glass net around must have been homesteads or residences of some sort. There's some old glass. So here is a building that looks a little more complete. Some of the walls are still standing. She would have been some pretty tough times. You can see that would have been the fireplace, most likely here. Looks like it was rocks filled with dirt for the walls. Some sort of render. So I'm just wondering, with all this clearing, if this was some sort of little town or camp at least. This looks like it was three rooms. So maybe this was like a boarding boarding house. Or maybe even stables for horses. So I saw this in the distance and drove up and this is one of the original um, sort of mine infrastructures. And here is a pit. The slope at this side, and I don't know what that would have been for. Metal. Something in there, don't know what that is. Some sort of tanks, leech tanks, or lots of animals fall in there and die by the look. So here's quite a complete cottage. place, fireplace in there, people still use it, front door, very cool, looks to be some sort of path here, I just saw this path and thought I'd see where it led. Maybe someone's just made this recently. Wondering if that path goes to a grave site or something. All right, we are going to leave this little ghost town slash mine. Um, head out there somewhere. Um, I think we should hit a road, which will take us back heading north on the highway. And we've got a bit of highway driving to do and then we head uh, west out to the Shark Bay Peninsulas. So that's the plan from here. So we're now on the Great Northern Highway heading to um, the turn off to Shark Bay. So we actually got a bit caught up in the bush. Um, we went down a track and pretty well had to cut our way through. It was pretty overgrown and hadn't been used for some time. But uh, we got out, so we're running a little bit behind, but we'll get to get to um, the roadhouse on the turn off, Overlander I think it is, and um, uh, stop, fill up with fuel and uh, head out to Peninsulas. 
So tonight I think we'll be camping somewhere out in the Point Peron or Cape Peron or if we can find uh, somewhere that can have a campfire we'll, we'll probably stop there. Okay, let's see, uh, see what today brings. Okay, I'm eating jerky. It's good. We're just at the turn off to Shark Bay. <clears throat> so, this is where the main piece of the adventure starts. So, from here we're going to check out all the places from here all the mud's flicking off the tyres from here to basically the tip of this peninsula so we're just going to have a look uh, at all the sort of main spots along here and then just see where we get to today see if we can find a camp that allows fires because most of them in here don't especially on the end I think there might be one between here and Denham that does but we'll have to find out and um if we can, we'll probably use that as our camp for tonight. But uh, yeah, it should be, a, should be a good few days in here just looking around. So let's uh, get to our first point of interest. So this is Hamlin Bay. And as you can see, it's all, it was basically a bitumen road to get in here, so you don't have to worry about uh, four-wheel drive or anything like that. So always been gonna come here and never have, so we'll go into what the stromatolites are about. Looks like there's a boardwalk thing over there. But as you can see, that's the uh, one of the bays of Shark Bay. <laughs> so let's go and take a look. Oh yeah, it's got a, like a boardwalk thing. That must be where we are. Yeah, we're here. Okay, well we'll walk out and have a look at the stromatolites. These are like the old, the micro, micro mats, microbial mats, built up over time. So this is what I think the strom stromolites, stromodolites should have looked like. So out on the end, they look more like what I would expect. Little lumps of rock, rock looking formations. It's perfectly clear and no wind. So that's Hamelin Pool and the Stromatolites. So they just look like rocks. But we're going to see what else is around here. So that turned out to be the postmaster's residence. Telegraph station is actually this building, which is closed, but we'll go take a look anyway. Oh, yeah, you can see. That's the old weather station box and an old one of the old pump up drain out pumps. <laughs> one of the last Telstra public phones in, in Australia. I wonder if it actually works. Works. Haven't seen one of them for a while. Here's some uh, old bits and pieces. It's an old pump. An old iron. So this must have been what the shell mining thing was about, these bricks of shells. Just carved out in squares. Says. 
So this is their little shop slash um, museum. I think most most of the museum might be behind there. Yep. So we're heading out to where the shells are mined. Out the back here, there's a grave here. Thomas Onslow Carmody, 1898. What a nice little graveyard. Oh yeah, here we go. This must be where you see the sunset. You can see in here they've carved, using some sort of saw, they've carved out square blocks They've made like steps after they're finished. A bit further down the road, so we just, there's Nanga Bay Resort in here. I've never been in here, so I thought I'd just come in and have a look. But um, Bitchman Road in, it's, it's uh, a resort. So my, I'm imagining it as being sort of little huts or little chalets or something like that rather than camping and caravans type thing so we'll take a look and then uh, it's not where we're going to stay so we'll take a look just because we're here and then uh, continue on Shell Beach is probably the next place we'll stop at well it sort of is like a caravan park tennis court that looks like it's dilapidated. Nice. This is the resort section. Actually come back here later on the trip and stayed I can definitely recommend it great people great food and the chef even doubles as the entertainment with his fire twirling so if you're looking for a campsite or a room I can definitely recommend the Nanga Bay Resort it's got a motel that'd be a nice place to stay camping or a caravan would be perfect I wonder if you can have fires here so following on the theme of sort of easy touring that's a bitumen road and this is obviously all packed. It's fitting into that mould for sure. So let's go and take a look. This is Shell Beach. Now this is what it originally starts out as. Until it breaks down into smaller shells I presume. This water is crystal clear. If it didn't have that breeze, you'd be able to see right through it. It's just acres and hundreds and hundreds of acres of shells. So that's Shell Beach, so now we're gonna go and find a, somewhere to camp for the night. Kick back. So this is called Cape Goulet, I think, is how you pronounce it. So as you can see, beautiful still water, and I might uh, go up there and have a look. That's Point Perons out there, 
and from about there, I don't know if you can see it through there, you can actually see the other peninsula which is the Steep Point Dirt, Dirk Hartog Island side. So uh, you can see the land from up here. So we're going to go and take a look down this road and see where this takes us. I should let the tyres down a little bit on this rocky stuff. So, so we were up there before and then we drove around and now we're just down on this uh, beach that's also made of shells. Looks like most of the beaches around here are made of shells and there's a little sandbar of shells out here. And there's Jason driving around. So this is a little little shell bar, a little bar of shells. On either side there's the ocean. And it's dead calm because we're in, in between two peninsulas. Living up to its name, it's quite easy to get around here. It's any four-wheel drive. So there's a couple of sort of all all-wheel drives, Honda, CRVs and stuff down here. So if you've got one of those you it's uh, easy as even on the driving on these shells. I can actually see a DR650, I think it is, motorbike coming in. It's all uh, pretty easy to get to. Just making it up to the top of the hill. I don't know if you can see, we're a fair way up this, this ridge line. So just getting to the top of the ridge line. It's just a bit limestoney, but other than that, it's not too bad. Just about any car would, four wheel drive would get up here. You might just have to let your tyres down a little bit to protect them. Oh, there's a dolphins out there, or a whale. There they go, right about there. Okay, so that is goddamn beautiful there. You do not see it like this very often. Oh, we're going to head to the next bay, which is where we're going to camp up. So let's uh, head down this hill. So I've let the tyres down, 10 pound, 
just to help with the rocks, help protect them a little bit. Okay, let's make our way out of here and then uh, back onto the highway for a little section and then we get to our camp spot, which should be similar to this, I, I guess. It's not far up the, up the coast. So I reckon that this is the campsite here because that's the lookout. And I reckon they've hidden a campsite down here. sign to the campsite uh, if you have a look at that out there how beautiful is that oh, we think you might be able to get down there somewhere here we go down here So this is our camp, look at that still ocean water, we're just tucked in behind here, we've got the cars here, we're going to set up the swags here, and then we'll watch the sun go down. So let's get everything set up. Most of camp set up, swag, chair, oh Jace is already cooking, you a bit hungry, oh yeah I think snag on, you champion, oh it's not homemade, okay I might uh, get the drain up. <laughs> 